what life is like without free software is something we don't have to speculate about because we can see that around us. Most computer users are using proprietary software, user subjugating software. And what we see is that uh, in various ways it does things that aren't good for them. For instance, they're forced to upgrade and they're forced to pay to upgrade. And they're forced to accept features that were put in there to molest them instead of to serve them. And they have no recourse about this. The support for this software is a monopoly. And as a result, the support is expensive and bad. And when, when they do the natural thing, which is share with each other, governments all around the world mistreat them, threaten them, bully them. Now, there's no justice in this, and there's no reason why a democratic government would do anything like this. But what we see is that these governments are responding to the demands of corporations and the U.S. government rather than to the well-being of their citizens. When the U.S. was a developing country, it did not recognize foreign copyrights. That was a wise economic policy. It didn't serve the citizens of the U.S. to recognize foreign copyrights. It doesn't serve the citizens of most countries to recognize U.S. copyrights, but they're doing so. Why? Because these governments are not serving the interests of their citizens. So in these many different ways, we see non-free programs mistreating people, spying on them, uh, refusing to operate, even sometimes having back doors. Of course, there are all, proprietary software is also a powerful mechanism for concentration of wealth into a few hands. Now, we can see an extreme case of this in Microsoft, but it's true more generally than that. And around the world, what we see is that it, it impoverishes people. With free software, we will see a different kind of economic flow. Instead of flowing out of most countries and regions into a few hands, what we see is the money circulates. And it circulates wherever, in whichever region or country or city you're talking about, the money circulates. Because when organizations and companies there want to change the software, they can do it. You know, if you buy a house or buy a building, you can change it if it's not what suits you. When you start using a free program, you can change it if it isn't what suits you. You're not stuck with it exactly the way it is, take it or leave it. So you get these clients that are paying programmers to change the software to do exactly what they want. But when they do this, instead of all the money going to a few large businesses, or nearly all of it, what you see is that there's a free market. A client wants to change a program. Well, there are various programmers who know that program, who could make changes. So the client gets to choose. And typically, programmers that are nearby and speak the same language have a certain amount of advantage not a, an insuperable advantage. If they're not good, they won't get the business. But they tend to have some advantage, which means that there tends to be work for people all around the world. 